EK Water Blocks makes some of our favorite quick release valves, but their previous attempt at a semi open loop cooler, the EK Predator, terminated after an overwhelming amount of issues with leakage. It was a shame too, because the Predator was genuinely one of the best performing coolers we'd ever tested for noise normalized performance. And ultimately, if it can't hold water, it's all kind of irrelevant. EK is attempting to redeem themselves today with the modular, semi-open approach set forth with the new EK MLC Phoenix series. A viewer recently loaned us their EK MLC Phoenix 360 cooler and Intel CPU block, which we then immediately put to work on the bench. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly, makers of the Conductonaut liquid metal that we recently used to drop 20 degrees off of our coffee lake temperatures. Thermal Grizzly also makes traditional thermal compounds for use on top of the IHS, like Cryonaut and Hydronaut pastes. Learn more at the link below. So this is EK's 360mm liquid cooler. It's a modular kit. Basically the one we have here came from a viewer, and the viewer purchased the 360mm radiator, which includes three of their Vardar Evo fans, and with that the viewer also purchased an Intel block. So this is the CPU cooler. There's no GPU cooler in this one, so you could buy a separate GPU block if you wanted to, it increases the price significantly, but today we're just testing the CPU cooling component. So this is a semi-open loop. It's basically a closed loop right now. However, you could use the quick disconnect valves, the QDC valves, and attach another component to the loop if you desired. And in that way, it's kind of an easier version, like a not even a baby's first loop. It's like even before that. So this is a quick way to get into a semi-open loop design, but it is kind of expensive. Just for these components, it cost the viewer who loaned it to us about $280. So I believe when I checked a moment ago, the CPU block for the Intel cooling component was 80 bucks, and then this radiator plus fans, almost $200 on its own. As for the design, it's pretty straightforward. It's very similar to the Predator previously, but improved in a few ways. I mean, one would hope, considering the Predator had a whole lot of leakage reviews uh, by consumers on Newegg, Amazon, and other retailers. So this one is still a pump on radiator design. So the pump is located up here. You've got some, uh, some of the tank up there as well, and then uh, the block for the rest. And it's really that simple. So if you do connect multiple components to this loop, like a GPU block, if it doesn't contain a pump within it, you're basically going to want to ramp this RPM up to the max. And it does create some pump wind, which is something we'll talk about momentarily once we get into the noise section. So that's the very basics of this cooling solution. This is not quite a closed loop liquid cooler. It's far more expensive, but it's also something you can add GPU blocks to. Now the question is whether or not that's actually worth it, or if you should start looking towards things like proper open loops at that point although they are a bit more complex to get into. So let's go through the thermal numbers and see how that looks. Then we'll talk conclusion and value at the end. We're starting out with a chart that only shows our EK MLC Phoenix tests, and then we'll add the rest of the coolers momentarily. This chart shows all of our Phoenix testing, including some quick push-pull configurations and noise normalized 40 dBA configurations. EK ships the unit with a stock pull configuration for the fans, and in that out-of-box configuration, it does the best. It operates with a load temperature of about 33.6 degrees over ambient. This was followed by a push configuration test using an Allen key to flip the fans around, which then gave us a 33.7 degree delta T over ambient. So completely 100% within margin of error at that point. And that would also suggest that there's no appreciable difference between push and pull configurations in an open air format. In fact, if you saw any impact from changing the push versus pull layout at all, we would suspect that it'd be more dependent on your specific use case, i.e. the literal case that you're putting it in and the rest of the cooling configuration within that case. That would be more impacting than in open air from what we've seen. Normalizing at 40 dBA increases our temperatures by a couple degrees as you'd expect, and the increase is outside of error margins. So it is actually measurable, although it's not necessarily appreciable to probably 90 plus percent of users. We'll talk about this more in a moment. Moving on to our steady state chart for all tested devices, the EK MLC Phoenix readily claims its position among the top three coolers we've tested. Its performance is within error margins of the EVGA CLC 280 and the Corsair H115i. 
We do not have the measurement resolution required to determine any difference between these three devices at this point. In the very least, we can confidently state that the EK MLC Phoenix 360 unit, cooling only the CPU, is a top three cooler on our charts. Its performance is admirable here, and the cooler's Vardar fans are a large contributor to the advantaged cooling capabilities. To give some perspective on where the Phoenix leads, we see it ahead of the Kraken X62, outside of error margins, and ahead of the Ice Bear 420, which suffers from both awful fans and a pump which is comparatively anemic to the large radiator size. More importantly, the EK Phoenix 360 silenced to 40 dBA performs better than about 80% of our charted items on this larger chart, meaning that it has lower noise performance and still exceeds the flat out cooling performance of most of its competitors. We don't have every single cooler we've tested on this chart, mostly because we run out of space, but the EK Phoenix at 40 dBA lands at seventh versus about 40 tested configurations on this test bed, which include largely liquid coolers. So that's damn good performance. Normalizing for 40 dBA, the EK MLC Phoenix 360 unit chart tops once again, though it is technically within margin of error of our second place line item, the Kraken X62 280 millimeter cooler. The Phoenix ends up at 35 degrees delta T over ambient and is mostly comparable in size to the 360 millimeter Corsair H150i. The H150i lands at 36.8 here. And of course, as always, this is noise levels in decibels when we're looking at 40 dBA for noise normalization. So we're not accounting for the type of noise. Although the EK Phoenix does rank as best for noise normalized performance at 40 dBA, it still has audible pump whine during use. So its type of noise is a bit more annoying than other items at 40 decibels. You may want to manually step down the pump if using this only to cool a CPU, though the higher speed will significantly benefit combined CPU and GPU loops. We're not sure if the pump whine is just in our sample or if it's a wider spread issue, but one noteworthy item is that we were able to reduce some other noises like turbulence caused by the fans by remounting the fans and resecuring the cables. They were a bit loose and that was causing some chatter when the fans were going at full speed. As for flat out noise tested in our standardized environment with a noise floor of 26 dBA, the EK Phoenix ends up about 48 dBA, but can spike up to 50 when pump wine gets bad. This does make it one of the louder coolers, but not the loudest. That'd still go to EVGA. Loudness is ultimately a function of how fast a manufacturer is allowing the fans to spin. And what's more important is the noise normalized thermals that we already showed you as they help illustrate how well a cooler can perform when under constrained conditions. So this cooler does well overall. It's a 360 millimeter cooler. It's appearing above other 360s in some of our charts. And in terms of thermal and noise to thermal performance, it's one of the leaders in both categories, at least if you ignore the flat out noise levels when we run it at 100% RPM. It does well, it's $280. This isn't something we would recommend buying if you're just going for a high performance liquid cooler that's easy to use because in that case, you could save more than $100 and get a properly closed loop. However, if there's a specific use case you want this for, for example, adding a GPU block, which something like a Kraken or a Corsair H series cooler couldn't do, then it's a good option. But again, at that point, it's starting to get so expensive that it's time to look at what open loops cost and see what kind of difference it is in price to jump to it and then if that's worth it to you. This is going to be a lot easier to set up. It's simpler. It's basically two quick disconnect valves and then you install everything else just like you would for any GPU cooler or any CPU block. So it is pretty trivial to set up. But uh, overall, we do like the cooler quite a bit for its performance. It's just expensive. So maybe not the most practical purchase, but if you already had your heart set on it because you just really wanted it, well, you can at least buy it knowing that it's good. So there's that much at least. And as always, we thank anyone who sent stuff in for loan to review. It's certainly helpful. This is a good one, but we'll have to be sending it back now. So thank you for the loaner. Uh, as always, subscribe for more. Go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Tops out directly or go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one or one of our other products like the mugs or the mats. I'll see you all next time.